director for the Healing Arts in Orange, Connecticut for the last 26 years. Um, and over the last 24 years, I've been, pre I've been treating patients for hypothyroidism. Um, I kind of have an interesting story of how I found out about treating subclinical hypothyroidism. I actually had a patient come into my office um, and give me uh, Dr. Broda Barnes's book, uh, Hypothyroidism, the Unsuspected Illness, and ask me to read it. And I always say I've learned, I've learned so much from my patients, from listening to my patients, because they always bring me interesting articles and books. Um, so I read Dr. Barnes's book, and, and shortly thereafter, um, I was at a, a meeting of uh, physicians and alternative practitioners, and one of the speakers that we had there was uh, Patricia Puglio, who was the um, director of the, of the Broda O. Barnes Research Foundation, and she talked about uh, clinical hypothyroidism, subclinical hypothyroidism, and how it was affecting so many people um, that you know were not being identified uh, by the blood tests that uh, that we currently use to diagnose thyroid problems. And um, sh not too long after that, actually, several of the doctors that the Barnes Foundation worked with either retired or passed on. Uh, Dr. Barnes himself had retired, and uh, several of the other doctors, and so. Um, Mrs. Puglio came to me and said, you know, would you, would you be willing to take some of these patients and continue uh, monitoring their thyroid um, and, and prescribing their thyroid medication? And I said, well, of course, I'd, I'd be glad to do that. Um, and so I had a really unique perspective because I suddenly had literally hundreds, hundreds of patients at every time coming to see me, and I would take a full history of what all the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism were the fatigue, you know, the, the depression, the inability to think straight, the memory problems, the dry skin, the, the poor immune function, the repetitive, you know, infections, getting sick every month, every two, three weeks, getting another sinus infection, another bronchitis, um, constipation, like all of these symptoms. And then when they were started by the respective doctor that they saw, they actually uh, would watch all of those symptoms melt away. Um, and so some of these patients had been on thyroid for anywhere from a few months to, to 30 years um, had been on, on thyroid uh, treatment, uh, natural desiccated thyroid. And they were so grateful and they were so afraid that they wouldn't be able to get that treatment. So they were, they were very grateful that you know, I was willing to continue. But it was quite an education listening to their story, their be sort of before and after story uh, as it had already played out, you know, uh, uh, before I started treating them. And so that gave me a lot of confidence in treating uh, more patients for hypothyroidism. And I would say that the majority of patients that I see who have some degree of chronic illness, often one of the, one of the key pieces is that they have clinical hypothyroidism, whether it's diabetes or heart disease, high blood pressure, uh, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, et cetera. It, often one of the critical under, underlying uh, pieces is um, is hypothyroidism. And so I've been working with the Barnes Foundation for the last 24 years. I've, I've uh, seen a lot of patients they've referred. Um, and I've actually had the, the uh, great pleasure to speak for them on several occasions. Um, one, of the, one of the key pieces that I always talk about, and I actually gave an hour-long lecture uh, for the Barnes Foundation, I believe they still have it available by recording, um, is, uh, is the 12 or 13 different reasons why the laboratory tests that we currently use um, are inadequate in some cases to identifying hypothyroidism. And unfortunately, that leaves a person who is clearly hypothyroid by clinical history um, untreated because the TSH test looks like it's okay and that person is still suffering, for sometimes for years and years and years. Um, I had a patient who um, I saw a number of years ago. He was an, an older man and he'd suffered from a variety of, of health conditions, but he suffered from pretty severe intermittent depression. And on several occasions during his many hospitalizations for depression, um, they'd actually measured his thyroid t to be low, and yet they would do another test and it would be within the reference range. It's not a normal range. And um, so they wouldn't treat him. And when we finally, at I think the age of 64, put him on thyroid treatment, it was the first time in his life that he had been depression free. Uh, so that's the kind of profound differences uh, that, can, that can be made with thyroid treatment um, and also the, the tragedy of an of a intelligent man whose life was pretty much ruined by depression that was very, very treatable with thyroid hormone. Um, and 
you know, I've got hundreds, literally thousands of stories I could tell um, of the success of, of identifying uh, clinical hypothyroidism and, uh, and correctly treating it correctly, uh, balancing and optimizing uh, metabolism. It makes a huge difference in the person's health and it's been one of the most rewarding aspects of my career as an integrative physician.